and welcome to this lecture on routing problems. And in specific, in this particular lecture series, we are going to look at what is a traveling salesman problem and how to mathematically formulate it, and what is the vehicle routing problem and how to mathematically formulate it. Before going into the traveling salesman problem or the vehicle routing problem, let's understand what is meant by routing. So, routing problems are basically addressing this primary question in the logistic space around how should a given set of locations be visited. So, if I have 10 different customers, in what order should I visit those customers? So, that is the routing problem. And the aim of any routing problem is basically to ensure that all the locations are visited and the demand in those locations should also be satisfied. And this is ensured while we attain either the minimum transport time or transport distance or minimum use of resources, the number of vehicles that could be available to me or we could do both, right? So that is in, uh, in general the crust of a routing problem. There are several routing problems of that and for this lecture we are going to be discussing about two of them. The first is the traveling salesman problem which is the TSP. And the second is the vehicle routing problem, which is the VRP. In particular, this lecture is going to look at mathematical formulations, integer linear programming formulations for these two problems, the traveling salesman problem and vehicle routing problem. It is noted that these formulations are basically going to be empty hard to solve, which means as my problem size increases, the number of constraints is drastically going to increase and hence I will not be able to solve them in a specified amount of time. So most of these problems in real life would be solved using heuristics. However, as learners, you must be aware how to formulate these problems mathematically. And that is going to be the crust of this particular lecture. Having said that, let's jump in to the traveling salesman problem. So what is a traveling salesman problem? So in this problem, we have a salesman who has to visit n nodes, right? So n customers have to be visited by this salesman and while he visit, uh, visits these customers, he should not do sub -tools. What does that mean? So, if I have, let's say, five nodes, one, two, three, four, and five, the salesman must start from any one of these nodes, you can start from either 1, 2, 3 or 4, that is to his choice, but given a starting point, let's say we start from 1, he has to go from 1 to 2, then from 2 he has to go to one of these, let's say he goes to 3, he goes to 4, he goes to 5 and he comes back to 1. So this is a route, right, and no sub routes are possible, which means from 1. I cannot go to 2, 3 and then return back to 1 and I cannot have a different node root which goes from 4 to 5. So these are called sub tools. So the question in a traveling salesman problem, let's say there are, there are a set of nodes, there are 5 nodes, in what order the salesman should cover these 5 nodes without having any sub nodes. And the assumption is that he can start from any node and he can go to any node. So this is called a Hamiltonian cycle. So if I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, from 1 I can go to 2 or to 3 or to 4 or to 5 and similarly from 2 I can go to any of the remaining 4 nodes. Such a cycle is called as a Hamiltonian cycle. So given a Hamiltonian cycle without any sub tools, what is the best possible route for the salesman? So that is the traveling salesman problem in a nutshell. So to formulate this kind, formulate any problem, uh, we have to first define the sets, the parameters, the decision variables, and then the objective function and constraints, right? So to get to this formulation, the approach that I suggest is to do verbally first, then do the mathematical notation. So verbally, what are my sets? My sets are basically the nodes that I have to visit. And since I am proposing routes, I must propose, I must be able to define arcs. So I to j. So that is my first set. 
set i j both representing my nodes which are 1 to n yeah. then for every node i to j i must know the distance so what is the distance for going from location 1 to location 2 what is the distance for going from location 1 to location 3 location 4 location 5 so it's going to be the distance right so that is d i j and usually this distance is represented in terms of a matrix known as the distance matrix so for the five point problem you would have something like this where i will have locations one two three four five one two three four five right so it's a 25 cell five by five matrix and the distance for each of these would be given inside these cells so let's say one to two is ten two one two three is five uh, 3, 2, so on and so forth. So that is the distance that one uh, that salesman will take to travel from 1 to 2. Usually this is a symmetric matrix, so it will just repeat here 1, 5, 3, 2. Let's solve a symmetric matrix problem, a simplest problem. So that is going to be the distance matrix D i j. So D 1, 2 is basically going to be equal to 10 d14 is basically going to be equal to 3. So that is the uh, distance matrix. An important thing to note, ideally speaking, 1 to 1, 1 to 2, uh, 2 to 2, 3 to uh, 3, 4 to 4 and 5 to 5, the diagonal elements of these matrix should be 0. But we usually give a very very high number in these cells so that we avoid moving from i to i in our solution. Right, so that is the reason why we will give a very high number in this uh, in these diagonal values. Okay, so these are the sets and the distance uh, and the parameters that we would require for solving a transport traveling salesman problem. Next comes the decision variables, the variables that we will have to find. In our case, all we have to say is whether the salesman goes from lo uh, location i. To location j immediately. So if the salesman visits node j immediately after visiting uh, from node i, then the value for this variable is 1, else it is 0. So it is a binary variable, so 1 or 0. And there is an auxiliary variable, I will uh, yeah, inform this auxiliary variable its purpose when I describe uh, the subrouting constraints later on in this particular lecture. So ui is the auxiliary variable that we will be using for eliminating subtools. So with these sets and parameters, what is our objective? Our objective is to minimize the total distance that the salesman is going to travel. So that is going to be the verbal representation of our objective function. And what are the constraints? There are basically three constraints here. The first one is that the salesman must visit all the nodes and he should visit them exactly once. He should not go back to something. From 1 to 2, he should not go back to 1 and then go to 3. Right? So every node must be visited and it must be visited only once. So that is the first constraint. The second constraint is that sub tools must not uh, must not be possible. So sub tools must be eliminated. So that is the second constraint. And finally, the non-negativity. None of our addition variables must be non-negative. They should basically be binary in nature. So that is the three constraints that we have for our TSP problem in verbal form. Now let's formulate them mathematically. Since I have already given you the mathematical versions for your uh, sets and division variables, I will look at the mathematical versions of objective functions and the constraints in the mathematical formulation. Right. So objective function, I have to minimize the total distance that I travel. In mathematical sense, it is nothing but if I go from i to j, then I must consider that distance. If not, 0. Let me, for example, take this scenario 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have basically variables x12, x13, x14, x15. If I go from 1 to 2, if I go from 1 to 3, if I go from 1 to 4, if I go from 1 to 5, right? So, if I go from 1 to 2, the distance is d12. 
If I go from 1 to 3, the distance is d13. If I go from 1 to 4, it is d14. And if I go from 1 to 5, it is d15. Any one of these is going to happen. So, x1 to 2 into d1 to 2 plus x1 to 3 into d1 to 3 plus x plus x1 to 4 into d1 to 4 plus x1 to 5 into d1 to 5. This is the distance that I am going to travel. So, one of these is going to be 1 and the others are going to be 0. Right, because it's a binary variable, and we'll enforce that in the next in the constraints. So, whichever uh, so based on the distance that I travel, I'll have to minimize. So, summation over all my i's and summation over all my j's and the corresponding distance of di into gj, whichever I'm taking, I must minimize that. So, that is my objective function. Minimize the total number, uh, total distance that I have traveled. Right. So, that is the objective function in a mathematical sense. Summation over i, summation over j, dij into xij. So, that is the objective function. Now comes the constraint. What is our first constraint? Our first constraint is that the salesman must visit all the nodes and he must visit it only once. So, when I say he must visit a node, let us say, we are, let's take the same example 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, from 1, he can either go to 2, 3, 4 or 5, right? So, when I take i is equal to 1, x 1, 2 plus x 1, 3 plus x 1, 4 plus x 1, 5 should be equal to 1. This summation should be equal to 1. What does that mean? And each of these variables can either be 1 or 0. They are binary. So, only one of them can be 1, all others must be 0. So, from a node, he can go to only one other node. Similarly, when I take, let us say from 1 I have gone to 2, from no other node I must come into 2, right? So, I can either come from 1 to 2 or 3 to 2 or 4 to 2 or 5 to 2, correct? So, that is enforced by the second constraint. Where I say x1 to 2 plus x3 uh, to 2 plus x4 to 2 plus x5 to 2 is equal to 1. Right? So that is the second constraint. Immediately, some people might ask, I have not considered the scenario of x1 to 1, or I have not considered the scenario of x2 to 2 here, right? I have not considered this. This will get eliminated automatically because you have considered a very very high distance for 1 to 1. If you have given 0 in the place in your distance matrix, if you just go back and I was explaining the distance matrix, if you consider 0 here, then the possibility of x 1 to 1 actually comes into picture. But because of these very high values given in the diagonal elements, these by default are going to be assigned 0 values. And hence, you can actually eliminate them from your constraints as well, instead of putting them here. So, even if you put them, they will be 0. So, obviously, one of these has to be 1, all the others will be 0. And hence, we are ensuring that all the things are visited once and they are only visited once. Right? So, that is the second constraint. The third constraint, uh, sorry, that is the first constraint. And it is split into two. You go into the node only once and you come out of node only once. So, that is your uh, first constraint. Split has two. The second constraint is the subrouting constraint. What I will do is I have given you this mathematical formulation. I would explain this in much more detail in the next slide. So, the non negativity constraint basically ensures that ui and uj, which are our auxiliary variables, the purpose of them will come to light in a minute, are going to be greater than 0 and xij is a binary variable. So, it can either be 0 or it can be 1 for any combinations of i and j. Right? So, that is your non negativity constraint. So, how does this particular equation eliminate sub 2s? That is the question. So, for that, let us actually uh, look at a scenario where sub 2s happen and how it is getting eliminated. Okay? 
So let's take the five point problem. One, two, three, four, five. Excuse me. Three, four, five. And let's say a sub tool, sub tool has happened. So you are going from one to two, two to three, and three to one, right? And then you are having a tool here. So you are basically doing a sub tool. One, two, three is one tool, and four, five is another tool, right? So when you have a sub tool, look at this equation in two sense. A sub tool. Containing one. So how does this how is this equation generated when there is a sub tool that is containing one? Basically, it gets generated like this: u one minus u two plus n in our case is five. So five times x one two is less than or equal to five minus one, which is four. Correct? Then for two. It will get generated as u two minus u three plus five times x two three less than or equal to four. Three to one is not defined because our set J is going to be only between two to m, all right, and i not equal to J. So if i will go from one to four, and J will go from two to five. Okay, so that is why. We will not generate an equation which says u three minus u two plus five times x three one because i is starting from two. Right. So if you vertically add here, you will get u one minus u three plus x one to two is going to be one because you are going from one to two, and x two to three is going to be one because you are going from two to three. So the sub tool is captured, so that will be ten less than or equal to eight. And we can always argue that we will have a sub two. We can find the values of u one and u two such that this constraint is satisfied. So independently, when we look at one, two, three, we get this equation, and we will say no, it is not eliminating our sub twos. But this should be seen in tandem with a sub two that is not containing one. So when we look at a Sub tool which does not have i is equal to one, we will end up looking at four and five, right? So let's write the equations for those. So what would that be? U four minus U five plus five less than or equal to four, and U five minus U four plus five less than or equal to four. Adding vertically. We will end up with ten less than or equal to eight, which is not possible. So, for every sub tool containing one, we will actually have a sub tool that does not contain one, which will violate the constraint. And hence, when this gets eliminated, automatically this will also get eliminated. Correct, and hence. The formulation will eliminate all sub tools that are possible, and you will have to end up with a two that satisfies it. I will leave it as a self work for you guys to find out how this constraint is holding up when I do a two. Let's say from one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, and five to one. That is a valid two. And when I do a valid two, whether this constraint. Is violated or not violated? I believe it has a self work for you guys to write it. Okay, so this is the mathematical formulation for the T S T. So we will have the objective function, the constraints, and the non-negativity. Right. So if to solve this problem, my hand is not in scope for us. Uh, so we will do this using Python. We will give you the Python code. That will generate this for any given data set, and you will have to get a root. So that Python code will be for will be provided to you, and as a self-learning exercise, go through the Python code and solve it.
with this i will stop this lecture and in my next lecture i will pick up the formulation for the vehicle grouping problem